Welcome back, everybody. Purple's a good color for today. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to the last bastion of the rain-soaked. It won't stop raining. It's raining right now. So we remember, we've got a bin. It has servos in it. It has so many servos that haven't been tested. Because when I say that it is the last bastion of the rain-soaked, I truly mean it as a servo has very low, I have very low expectations. Don't blow up. Make a accept, make an acceptable amount of torque. So for today, it being rain soaked, we're doing a double header of SenseCam from Amazon. These are starting to pop up more and more and more on Amazon. And I have not previously tested a single SenseCam servo. We've done Flash Hobby, DS Power, Animos, you, you name it. We're, we're AGFRC, obviously. We're running down all of the Amazon servos because the boutique brands are getting out of hand. There are, a, there are an uncomfortable number of boutique servos above $150 each, and it's absolute madness. Uh, and it's just out of frame. This is a non-pro Amazon Blue case. Those are $29. It makes 600 and change ounces of torque. It is perfectly acceptable. But I know some of us, we have either specific needs. On one, we have the... Okay, let me get the numbers. This is the EX2950 MGX on the left. It is a half height. It is a low profile rated for 50 kg. So they claim, which is a uh, 694 ounces at 8.4 volts. And on the other side, we have the SC6155 MGX, which is uh, rated to 55 kgs, which is 764 ounces. These are not direct power servos. These are both receiver powered servos. So we'll be using, he's just partially out of frame here, the test rig that has employs a Hobbywing 1080 WPG2, which has a selectable BEC, five amp output fixed, and it has selectable output at six volts, 7.4 volts, and 8.4 volts. We're not gonna bother testing at six volts. That would just be testing against the numbers that the manufacturers provide, which are pretty decent. I didn't write them down, so we'll start from left to right. At 7.4 volts, 45 kg, which is 624 ounces, and 0 0.08, that's crispy. And at 8.4, we've got 50 kilogram, 694 ounces, and 0 0.07. That is also crispy. That is on the half height. Well, low profile, not, not truly a half height. Then we've got the, uh, what did I say, was the 2950. No, I'm sorry, that's the 2950. This is the 6155. It doesn't matter. That's the half height, and this one isn't. That's 7.4 volts, 49 kilograms per centimeter, uh, 680. And at 8.4, we've got 58 kilograms, 805 ounce inches. And uh, we, we sacrifice a little bit of speed in favor of torque. Uh, this one is claiming 0.14 at 7.4 and 0.12 at 8.4. Now, one might say uh, 0.14 and 0.12 much slower than 0.08 and 0.07. I find in servos like this, it's all, it's almost too fast. Uh, 0.07 is a lot. I think 0.12 is in a really good spot. And if anything, both of these are going to have, if not an excess, then a surplus of torque. Uh, they claim oblique gear. They claim all metal casing and IP67 waterproofing on both. We have a reasonably short lead on the full-size boy. And we've got, it looks like about the same length lead on the low profile. That, no, I, I think I can go ahead. Oh, a, also a much more flexible wire. There's, there's nicer wire on this guy. Both of these guys were sub 100. The full height guy, oh, it'll be up in the sidebar that's over there. I want to say it was about 70 bucks, 66 to $70, something like that. I'll have to go back and check. This guy was like $86, but there was a 10% off coupon. So it was high seventies. And this is the, this is the relevant real deal Holyfield. This is the one that we want to know because 
Half lights. If you need an LP, if you're running servo, if you're running, if you're running BTA servo behind the axle and stuff like that, or say rear steer on a Capra, things like that, there are applications where you can't fit this, this big tall boy. He's a big tall boy. So we want to go low profile and what have we got? Right? A Reefs 800 LP, $159, I think. An SDRC RS700 is, I want to say, $139. That's expensive, man. That's really expensive. And if this thing will produce, we'll throw down 50 kg. Honestly, as I said, servo needs to work and not blow up. If we can get 40 out of this guy and 50 out of this guy, I would be ecstatic. If they hit their numbers all that much better, it just opens another avenue to us. And maybe we can potentially start uh, snapping up some sense cam servos. Let me get the test array, which has not been cleaned up since the last time you saw it. If you are a frequent viewer of the servo tests, it's a bit of a nightmare, but it does give us potentially valuable numbers. Honestly, getting this thing to a position where it was focusing on the numbers uh, was the most difficult part. It did. It didn't want to do it. So uh, I would have preferred a little more zoom in. Potentially, we can do that digitally in the edit. We'll see how it cleans up. We are using a simulated 3S input. Make sure our amps are okay. So amps are all the way up. So we're basically feeding unlimited amps into the 1080 G2. But that essentially doesn't matter. Uh, we've tried, I've dialed it all the way down to like seven amps. This is a 30 volt, 10 amp power supply. And odds are, if you're going to run an external BEC to run your stuff off of, you're probably going to be using something along the lines of a, a 10 amp BEC anyway. I have now determined that Susan might not be the best suited for this because we're going to keep doing this all day long. So we'll opt instead for the old, uh, the old CD case. So channel one, and I believe it's been a minute. Hey, look at us. We will have the display. This will be the voltage and amperage actually being drawn from the servo. This will be the amperage being provided or actually drawn by the ESC. And you will get to see how ESCs are just both in name and deed. Uh, just amplifiers, that's what they are, or rectifiers? Rectifiers are amplifiers. They're changing. They're, 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 amp ampli they're amplifiers. They're, they're altering uh, voltage. They're trying low into high, high into low, low into high, low voltage into high voltage. Uh, you will see that the amp numbers will almost exclusively be different between the top display and the bottom display. As I said, the numbers that these give us are in the grand scheme of things. Not that, are not overwhelmingly important, but I like to find out the big takeaway that we're getting here. Oh, wait, first noise test. Listen, that's what you want to hear. Uh, if you go like this and it goes, mm, that's what you don't want to hear. See? That's an acceptable level of speed. And this is at 7.4. And we're going to test it on 8.4 as well. Because, you know, if you have the option, if you have the option and opportunity to run 8.4, do that. Okay, get that there. We're hoping now that all of our batteries and things like this are full and ready to charge. Make sure we're turning the right way. Okay. Away, away. Uh, Rock Hobby used to be a VT1. VT1 got repurposed. It's basically the same thing, same style receiver, everything. Uh, we're 10 watts unloaded on a uh, tune machine. 55 turn. I've been looking for that 55 turn. So what we do is we do three pulls at each voltage. We're bleeding off voltage low. There we go, 12.6. We have an idle draw of 0 0.06 amps, which is effectively nothing. And uh, by the time that gets through the ESC and towards the servo, it drops down to, well, it says 0.2, but we have one less. We have uh, significantly less decimal points of fidelity on there. What do we want to see at 7.4? 
This on the 6155, which is the full height, yes, that is the full height. We want to see something in the neighborhood of 680. Now, there will be a correction factor because this horn does not have a hole at 25 millimeters, or I'm sorry, 25.4 millimeters, and that does not particularly matter because very, very few of us are running at one inch. Most of us are running at where this hole is, 24 millimeter. A typical servo horn, the Amazon servo horn is the longer horn from Vanquish. They're all 24 millimeter. So the torque you get at 24 millimeters on this setup, that's pretty much going to be a real world. And it's going to be as real world as we can get because we are not testing instantaneous torque. We are testing stall torque. It has to pull the scale until it stalls and then the scale will go beep. And that's what the servo is capable of holding. Stall torque is an important number to us. It's valuable. Instantaneous torque, which is how most uh, manufacturers and resellers measure their torque numbers, that the instantaneous torque is a meaningless number. That is how much torque can a servo generate for one millimeter for basically one tenth of a second. It's just strike and then a torque force meter measures it. This is also being piped through an ESC, so we're not being given the unlimited voltage. We're not being given unlimited amperage. And this is going to let us know a little bit more what a servo will do in the real world. So let's, let, let's, let's get through all of that stuff. And it is forward. Yes, it is forward. We are going to do three pulls at 7.4, three pulls at 8.4. Then we're going to swap over to the 50 kg LP. And we'll see how that does. And then we'll see some numbers at the end. And so long as gears don't explode... We're probably doing all right. First pull, 7.4. 509, which is significantly less. What was that 509? 509.0, which is significantly less than what we are uh, promised. Yeah, they're saying 680. 509, 500 ounces for me, which is right around the 30. Is that 32 kg? Cal calculator. Uh, 32 kg for me is pretty much the starting point for a steering servo. Uh, no, 445 is 32 kg. So we're in that 35 kg range. That's acceptable. It's not really acceptable for a servo that's rated for 55. But And we're supposed to get, I think, 49. So second pull. And wildly consistent, 536.7. So we clear it and we do it again. Let me make sure. We, we, we worry that this, this radio is untested in this, in this format. We worry that we're not, we're not pulling far enough. We're going to get three pulls and then I'll tinker with it a little. We'll see. So third pull at 7.4. It's definitely pulling far enough, but it's still 542.8. So it's climbing up, but that's 20% under spec. So I'm going to look at endpoints on this. And then we, we might repeat the 7.4. You know, it's raining. We adapt as we go. And endpoints are, are all the way out. So it, for, I, I guess, sake of overall fairness... We're going to give it one more pull, and I'll drop that. So basically, we'll do four pulls and drop the lowest. I mean, I guess that could just be a thing that we do moving forward. So it's 7.4. The other pull is 545.6. That's very consistent. So I don't know if we're going to... Moving forward, I don't know if we'll discard first pull or discard lowest pull. It is fairly rare that the, the strongest pull is the first one. But we're also going to do the new methodology, which is we're going to do all 12 pulls. Then we're going to talk about the math. It, it helps it helps expedite. So we'll drop the we'll drop this down because we want to see we do want to see what the speed increase looks like going up to 8.4. Turn this off, turn it back on. And I've done this so many times that we know we just go to 14, and we go to 3, and we go, okay, we turn it off, we unplug this, we turn it back on, and now we are at 8.4 volts. For me, that's, that's fast enough. We are nowhere near 
the 55 kg. Uh, 542. Well, I can do. I can do it real quick. Before we go through the whole math, the average on that is gonna. We'll just call it 540. Yeah, it's 39 kg. So we're off by 10 because I think I said 49. Yeah, 49. We're off by 10 kg. That's a lot. It's still. I mean, it's plenty usable. 500 plus ounces is great. Uh, anything beyond a certain number is just surplus. You're probably going to start bending rod ends and snapping stuff, so we don't have to go crazy. Let's get through three pulls on the 6155 at 8.4 volts. First pull. And the the jump is negligible. 581.8. I should have written that off to the side in case we need to discard the first one. Second pull. And it's absolute ice. It's cool in the building, so it's not so... Oh, there we go. There we go. We're going to 604.1. So the question that is now being mulled over is this guy, the 6155, at about 70 bucks, putting in that high 500s, low 600s at 8.4. Oh, and I haven't even looked. Not once have I looked at the amps. So for the third pull, we will. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. 609.2. So it's constantly creeping up. Again, um, an average of, let's call it 595. I know it's math, but that's 43 kilo. So it did not improve a great deal so this is not a 55 kg servo i would call this a 45 kg servo and before we do the final numbers the guy in the edit is the one that sees all the amp numbers sees all the numbers and puts it all together uh, this is not a servo that's standing at this point despite being very quiet and rock solid it is in this humble reviewer and tester of things opinion uh, this servo is a bit overpriced for what you get because 0.12 and 600 ounces that's that's not rarefied air uh, what do we say it was 43 kilo and 0.12 yeah you can beat that for less the flash hobby 45 kg i'm almost a, a hundred percent certain will beat those numbers and on any given day you can get that servo for about 40 bucks between 40 and 45 bucks so the since cam 6155 it's solid but i don't i don't think it the cost the cost benefit analysis doesn't work out I have a bigger desire to see this one, and I have to go get a Dremel. See this little notch where this goes in? This servo is so short underneath, it pulls that wire up so far it won't even fit. So, uh, again, oh, I got to turn this down to 7.4 as well. Yeah, and I will say, this isn't explicitly... The reason that we made the servo mount out of oak. But it doesn't hurt. It's a real different sound to this one. Try to get this centered a little. Oh, that's pretty good. That's that's not too bad. Centered up pretty good there. So there are some sizable speed claims on this guy 0 0.08 7.4 oh. it's a quick little boy and definite points for that dead silent i had moderate to low expectations for the 6155 i don't really care i have options in that range. For the money that that guy cost, the 58 kg flash hobby, 
whose name is the 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 lyrically named BLS four zero five eight RP. Uh, it will make its numbers. The the venerable. There's one right over here. The venerable sixty kg direct power flash hobby. I own like a dozen of these. They just work. So competing against servos like that is tough work. But LP. LP, there are lots of places that you end up needing them. And they're hard to come by unless you want to spend $150. So if nothing else, my anticipation for this is, is much higher. I didn't even look through the bag to see. Oh, very nice. The LP comes with a very nice machined servo horn. So that's that's a power bonus. Did the other one? 6155? No, 6155 comes with a little like a little more uh, vanilla. Very nice horn on the LP. Very nice. Uh, so we were going to do three pulls at 7.4, three pulls at 8.4. And uh, I meant to look. What are we hoping for? 45 kg, 625 ounces. Honestly, just cross them as best you can. Over 500 ounces is what we'd like to see. First pull of the 2950, yes, at 7.4 volts. 408. That is, that is so far below what we're used to seeing that it, I oh mean, it's making me question pretty much everything. That is 50% below stated. That's, that's too low. I'm going to watch the amps this time for the second pull. Yeah, the volts are really, I'm watching the volts really dip. On, on what's feeding the servo, 428.5. We're going to be throwing away that 408, aren't we? I think I think we are. So second and or third pull, whichever it is. Yeah, it's climbing. It's climbing, but it's not... 448.0, and then in order to discard, to get that low boy out of there. Yeah, there we go. 445.4. Four, That's more like it. Mid 400s. So that is in the 32 kg range. 32 k. It's still too ex man. It's still too expensive. It's still it's still too expensive. And before anybody says you know give it a bigger BEC or whatever, when we're talking about receiver powered servos, there's no there's no point. Uh, if you get a decent 10 amp power uh, BEC, it, it's going to cost you. Now well, they've got the massive ones from like LA Express, but let's just look at like a CC BEC, which is going to cost you about 30 bucks. You factor in 30 bucks to the cost of the servo. Well, now we're just you might as well just buy like an RS700 or something. Buy, buy a a higher power direct power servo. So I, I want to know what it goes off of this, because most people are going to be running it off of a 5 amp internal BEC. So we're now at 8.4 volts. We want to see this. It's just fast. It's, and it is, it is absolutely solid. Most of the time when you push on this, you feel a little something some give to there. Maybe it's the oblique gears, but that thing is absolutely rock solid. And we'll get all the correction. We'll get all the correction numbers as to what they are at, at one inch. But, you know, since Cam, I mean, this, this is the odd man that we, that we don't know. Because we were testing it on the Vanquish before and we're going to take a minute after these three pulls to potentially invalidate the whole thing. We'll do that for, you know, for science. First pull at 8.4, which is sometimes 8.5. Yeah, again, the jump is... 
the jump is 10%. 490.2. Generally, we see a bigger uh, we see a bigger jump, but I don't know. Uh, is this the fault of the rock hobby? We're we are going to find out. The consistency is really there. Four ninety three point six. This is. Oh come on, show me, show me the third one since Cam is the eighty bucks too much for what we're getting. And that's a tough call to make. 503.8, that's a tough call to make because, as I have said, the out the, the, the availability of LP servos. If this servo was $60, if that servo was 60 bucks, I would be like, buy it right now. At 80 bucks, I don't know. I don't know. The average on that, we're going to call it 495. 495 divided by 13.88. It's 36 kg. That's nowhere near 50. That's nowhere near 50. So when we're going to put up splash screens that are going to have all the numbers, we're trying to consolidate. We'll put up those splash screens. What I will do in the meantime is I will grab a receiver and we'll hook a different radio up to this and we will see if that, okay, the last pull, we're not going to change anything else. We're just going to change the radio and the receiver because all I have to do is unplug two plugs, boom, bap, bing, bong, we're done. If that number goes up significantly, then I've wasted everyone's time. So I was rummaging around the bench and I was trying to remember, I was like, what's a radio that we have an extra receiver for? Well, might as well go, go full nukes, right? KO Propo RREX2. Uh, whose steering channel is not reversed. So now instead of turning away from myself, I'm turning towards myself. All we need to do is pull it. We need to pull it, and we need to see what we see at 8.4, which is 497.6. Okay, so it's not the radio. The The Rock Hobby is doing just fine. And honestly, it's kind of the perfect application for the Rock Hobby. So, <coughs> now is the time when we, we, we do, we do a, a number of things, which is, we will power that down. We'll power that down. We'll take this off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it. And what are we talking about? Is it? What do we have in terms of value? So, I don't know the final numbers, but I do know approximate numbers. I would not run these servos at 7.4 volts. The output is insufficient at 7.4. So if your BEC, if your internal BEC does not go to 8.4, I I would not I I could not I could not and would not recommend either of these. Honestly, I would like to see just stuff moved around, stuff that didn't move around and can't move around, but it would be outright amazing if we could somehow if we could somehow magic it. And let me let me talk about that here real quick. So what we have seen here from the full height 6155 and the half height 2950 are not bad numbers. Honestly, if they had chosen to put different graphics on there, if they'd called this guy a 45 and this guy a 40 thereabouts, and we got that close, uh, I would be fine with it. Uh, hits manufacture target, uh, that's a no on both. It's, it's really not even close. And... In the spirit of the Amazon Blue case that I showed earlier, what you're buying with your money, with your big money, if you're spending more than $30 or $40 on a servo, torque is going to go up to a certain point, and then you're going to reach a plateau of unusable torque. 700 ounces is about the top end of, above that, this is just surplus torque. Like, you're, I have servos that make 1,000 ounces, servos that make 1,100 ounces, and it's like, it's back of the napkin numbers. It's talking to your buddies. Oh yeah, man. Oh, mine, mine do a thousand. 
you can't use a thousand. If you're servo on axle, you could get away from the with the output of both of these because they they will hold it and they will hold it solid. So what it comes down to is I don't know where SenseCam is getting their pricing model. As SenseCam is pricing their servos pretty much in line with AGFRC stuff. And but of course, AGFRC doesn't have a half height at this sort of a rating. So what did we figure that was? About a 35 kg half height. If that servo was 60 bucks, it would be amazing. If it was 50 bucks, it would be one of the most outstanding values on Amazon, but it's not. The day-to-day -day price is $87 on that half height and about $70 on the 55 kg. Servo prices on Amazon are well and truly like the stock market. They go up and down there all over the place. When purchasing the, the one that I had shown just a moment ago, this 60 kg from Flash Hobby, I've paid as little as $49 for one of these and as much as 67. It depends on when you need it and what you're basically willing to spend on it. I generally look for servos in the 50 to 60 kg range and these will these will undoubtedly be useful servos. These servos can and will be used in builds, but I I can't I can't outright say don't buy these. But I can say in terms of ounces per dollar, ounces per U.S. dollar, these are not going to do remarkably well. They're just they're just not because I can give you a ballpark. What did I say? Like five ninety five. And that's uncorrected. We'll go with the biggest number. About a 595 average at 8.4, uh, and it was like 72 bucks. That's eight ounces per dollar. Is that right? Did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Yeah, it's eight ounces per dollar. It's not. It's not remarkable. And then the other one. Now in half height, we have to look at numbers a little bit differently. We'll give it the tr the proper benefit of the doubt and call it 500. But uh, it's eighty six bucks. Yeah, it's five point eight. That's that's in there in the like Holmes range. Holmes has got some servos that are like five ounces per dollar, and you know Protec three seventy stuff like that. We get into some expensive servos that you know you tend to be buying. You're you're paying for when you buy a Protec, you buy a Holmes, you buy anything like that. You're paying for the back end. You're not just buying the servo. You're buying the stuff behind the servo, the warranty, the service, the availability of parts. Three Brothers, NSDOC, any of that stuff, any of the boutique products. That's what you're paying for. With this, we're looking for a lower price because when I buy a servo off Amazon, I never ex ex uh, expect. That warranty is intended, implied, or applicable. You're buying a servo because it's more inexpensive. So when you buy a servo that makes near 800 ounces of torque and you pay $60 for it, there's a chance it might blow up. And we've been lucky so far. But since Cam is a little bit too expensive, that is a solid servo, but the price of those servos need to come down about 25%. Or their specs need to go up about 25%. One or the other. It's one or the other. So in terms of value, probably not there. In terms of solidity of the servo. And in terms of if you can get this guy on a sale day and you need an LP servo for your application, so long as you're not putting this on, on the deluxe front and axle of your sportsman, where you're probably actually going to need a bit more to move all that brass and tungsten around. For those of us who are, are dabbling with putting the servos behind the axle, probably not a bad option. It's a little too expensive. Wait until there's a coupon or if you, you've made a return and you can girl math that business because Amazon has put like credit into your account. So when you put this in your cart and you go to check out, you're like, oh, it's only $58. Then it seems like it's a pretty good deal. We, we can trick, we can, we can gaslight ourselves into buying a lot of things and accepting a lot of inevitabilities. But since Cam was underwhelming on the day, sadly, solid servos, solidly built, solidly performing, very quiet, but in, in, in my humble estimation, too expensive for what you get but that end choice that final decision is entirely in your hands and i leave it to you at that so thank you so very much for watching everybody we will see you in whatever comes next uh servo tests are not 
one of the highly uh, most highly reviewed things on the uh, or highly viewed things on the channel, which is why you don't see them as often. My motivation to do it is low when I spend a bunch of time on this and the edits and the graphics and everything, and then it gets 300 views. So if there is a particular servo that you are looking for, please do put it in the comments below, and there is a very strong chance that I have tested it and or used it or have it in service and just haven't done the full-blown servo test on it. We have run, you name it, we've pretty much tried it. So, except for since game, obviously. Anyway, we're, we're talking in circles. Thanks so much, everybody. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. In between now and then, please, one and all, do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, it's not raining. We've got better stuff to do. We, we want to be outside instead of testing servos. Thanks.